In today's episode, we're going to talk about mindset. It's been a tough season. A lot of realtors that we that I've talked to and you've talked to have been struggling with just kind of powering through on the mental side of things and emotional side of things. So we're going to dig into the five things that we use. Uh, we might get into a few more. The five things that we use to combat that in terms of uh, physiology, in terms of practice, in terms of routine, um, just consistent actions that can keep you um, out of the muck and um, have you powering through a time like this and winning. So I'm excited to get into this stuff and we'll uh, see you in the episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Agent Bridge Podcast. I'm Brandon Baca, Marine Corps veteran and 15-year realtor, broker, and coach. And I'm Arl Hessen. I'm a Fortune 500 C-suite executive, real estate investor, and entrepreneur. The Agent Bridge is the proven path to real estate success without the burnout. All right, welcome to episode 34. We actually said the wrong episode last time, so we were on 33, but I said 32, and so now we're on 34. <laughs> um, anyway, make sure you like, 30 please. Something. Yeah, 30 something. Make sure you like uh, the episode. Please subscribe to the podcast. We've got so many new people subscribing, and we're so appreciative and uh, excited to get into the um, lesson today, the content today. But before we do, as always, we do a market update. We just had something happen on Thursday, nothing major, but let's talk about just kind of what's going on. Yeah, the CPI index came out, Fed Fed had their minutes released. Um, they paused the rate hikes. We, you know, we were kind of hoping they were going to say no more rate hikes, period. Mm -hmm. And that I think that would have helped rate outs quite a bit, helped rates out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't hear that. We heard that it's a pause. Um, there was some positive action, you know, on Friday after the Fed actually spoke. Um, so they did trend okay. down just a just a hair, but we're still not kind of where we were five weeks ago with that um, mm -hmm. kind of mid six rate. Um, but I do think we're trending in the right direction. Well, we're not in the sevens, right? No, we're okay, not in the sevens. so you were locking people last week and some, or we were talking about locking people somewhere in the high fives, low sixes. Is that right? Yeah, Depending FHA, on credit score. yeah, yeah. Cre okay, credit score, yeah. FHA. Okay. Um, kind of, you could you could lock there. Um, I'd say your base rate's probably closer to mid sixes. But. Yeah, if you haven't listened before, we we've, we've talked about FHA, uh, and I, I think it's worth mentioning again because I think it um, for you guys that are maybe new in the business or maybe have come in in the last three years and FHA has kind of had a negative connotation. It's a great product. Great product. And it works. And yes, you do have loan limits in terms of like the amount of money that goes on an FHA, but the majority of houses fit inside the FHA context. So, uh, I mean, you use it. I yeah. mean, it's low down payment. Yes, you've got some PMI, but um, uh, you can get really good credit, uh, you, really good rates. You can get a with a with a halfway decent credit score, so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah, I mean the, yeah. the key is just to work with a lender who's going to shop all products and and recommend the appropriate product. I mean, yeah. there are certainly circumstances where I would say, hey, we need to go conventional here. There are certainly circumstances where I say, hey, look, we need to be looking at FHA here. Yeah. Um, but I would say more often than not, when I say, hey, let's look at FHA, yeah. somebody says, oh, I don't want to go FHA. I've heard that's first time home buyer, not true, or yeah. I've heard. Hey, that's um, you know kind of a subprime product, and also not true. So, you know, just work with a good lender. Make sure that they know the portfolio of products that they offer, and you know they'll they'll recommend the right one. Yeah, that's what well, they do for and, a living. And a shameless plug. I mean, we, we can recommend you. I mean, if if uh, with, which what states are you licensed in? I'm licensed in Texas, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Florida. Right. So a lot of you guys that listen are in those places. RL can help you with that loan. So feel you guys feel free to reach out and. Um, one of the things that I know, and uh, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I know you're going to look at the overall situation and recommend the best thing for the client. Yeah. Right. And help them. And so uh, that's the idea. Yeah. So if you're a real estate agent, feel free to recommend, but also know that um, you, you as the real estate agent shouldn't be doing the work as far as like figuring out what they should do. Get them to a lender. They're going to be more open with the lender in terms of what their financial situation is. And RL knows how to ask the right questions to get into, into the particulars to help solve the sort of matrix of options there are to create the best situation. Yeah, I've had a, actually a couple of listeners reach out to me in the last 30 days. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great. Nice. Okay, well, good. Okay, so um, one of the things that uh, we want to talk about today, or, or basically the, the content form format, is going to be... Um, mindset hacks for tough seasons. We're in this very difficult season, but it doesn't really matter. I, well, let me say this. We're not in a difficult season. There is not a good market or a bad market. There is a real estate market, right? And each market presents different opportunities. 
So you don't want to think of it in terms of bad or good, but you can think of it in terms of different, right? So let's reframe that. And for me, let me, let me reframe that for myself in terms of, Hey, it is just a real estate market. But, um, what, what I can tell you in any market is this is going to happen. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to get rejected. You're going to have seasons of drought where maybe you didn't do the things that you thought you should have done. Um, there's a lot of talk about where people say, well, you just need to like control your attitude, but what do you actually do to maintain that good attitude? And what are the habits that are going to keep you going and even cause you to thrive in a down market? One of the things that we were talking about before this episode, and I did not tell you we were going to talk about this, but we were talking about a um, uh, a series that we both love called Band of Brothers. And I think about that a lot in terms of like, I, I'm a military veteran. And so I think about Band of Brothers a lot in terms of like leadership and um, execution. But what I've been thinking about it a lot lately is in terms of problem solving. Right. So if you think, if you put yourself in the situation of these guys and they're waking up every single day with major problems to yeah, solve. Way, way bigger problems than we have to worry <laughs> way about. Way bigger right? problems, like, yeah, how to keep people alive, right? But still, it's a really good study of, like, a wartime scenarios, a really good study of those, like, leadership lessons where really, honestly, in your military situation, in a wartime scenario, bad things are happening every single day. Absolutely. Right? And the reason that I wanted to frame it that way is because for you in your life, right, if you're a listener... I already know that 75% of the stuff that comes in front of you every single day is perceived as negative stimulus, right? That's just the way that your brain works. Um, and so, you know, really you are at war with your mindset every day. So what are the strategies? What are the taxes, tactics? And I'm excited to get into this with you because you've done a lot of coaching on the athletic side and on the cycling side. And so you probably have fought, probably one of the main things you fought was not um, you know, this sort of like, what do I do, but how do I stay consistent? So it's like here in the mind. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And it, why do you think that those guys are such great leaders? Because they have so many life experiences. They have so many experiences of different situations that they have to work through right. and make decisions in. And that's similar to what you're saying about different markets. Like yeah. it's not, it's not a bad market or down market. It's a different market yeah. and it's going to make you a better realtor. If you want to pull the positives from this, look at it from the standpoint of, hey, look, I've worked in a seller's market. I've worked in a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. I've worked in a market where it's kind of in between. I've worked in down markets. I've worked in up markets. This is all going to make you a better realtor. Yeah, absolutely. This isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. And the people the people who can kind of dig in um, are the people that are going to really thrive when uh, things turn in the opposite direction. And so this this market will make great realtors. And so I want you to make a decision as a listener to say, Hey, look, this is the season that's going to make me a great agent well, instead of being a victim. And more importantly, it's going to make you an agent that can survive in any market that's at right. any moment. Because right, you know, last, last couple of years, deals came differently. Mm -hmm. Some people say they came easily. Maybe that's a way to describe it, but they definitely came differently. You right. found clients differently. Now yeah. you're learning how to find clients in a different manner. And you know, two years from now, it may be different yet. So you're always trying to learn how am I going to incorporate um, the things that I know about being a good realtor into my business right now to find me clients in this market, whatever it may be. Yeah, I always carried a sense of pride about this. And people ask me, like, when did you get your real estate license? Well, 2008. And they go, oh, man, what a great time to get your real estate license. Sarcastically, but the reality of it is, like, I carried a sense of pride. Like, I built a career in the midst of a down market. So for you guys that are listeners, it's like just you, you in the future are going to carry this time as, uh, as some pride in your ability to survive and thrive in a market like this. The one thing we know about real estate is the market today is not going to be the same as the market tomorrow or the That's day right. after that. It's always going to be different. You're going to have to learn to navigate it. So might as well start today. That's right. Okay. So let's talk about just like the top five mindset hacks. These are the things that I use. Um, and you probably, you feel free to throw in any of these that you want or any of the things that you use. Um, but these are the five things that I use to kind of, you know, combat again, negative thoughts or negative mindset and reality. Like both of us are just like you guys, like 75% of the stuff that comes to us, 
right? That might be different problems, but they're still problems that we have to solve every single day and they're perceived as negative stimulus. But you just have to sort of like uh, build up a little bit of callous in your mind, um, not j- not being jaded, but being like, hey, look, being tough, being mentally tough. And these are the things that you can use. And number one is just having a gratitude practice and being able to look around at your life and go and see the things that you can be grateful for and be genuinely grateful for those things. And, um, you know, we do this, we have a daily huddle every single morning in our brokerage. And, uh, we, the first thing we start is like with, Hey, what are you grateful for? Just to sort of, um, generate the mindset of gratitude. Now, I think one of the things that's beneficial for both of us is we came from, both of us came from, uh, you know, I wouldn't say, uh, uh, impoverished backgrounds, but both of us came through places or times where times were tough in the eighties and early nineties. And so both of us come from, you know, we didn't have just like an abundance of stuff. We don't come from rich families. We both kind of had to power through. So like I look at my life now and I'm so grateful. Um, you know, when I look at, you know, the house that I live in and, the city that I live in and my kids and my wife and like all of these things that I have to be so, that I'm so grateful for supportive parents. Like those things are just, they're a huge blessing. So it's just good to have a gratitude practice where you're just recognizing those things that are in your life. Yeah. You, I, I, you know, it's so, um, it's so surprising how difficult this exercise is when you first get started. Yeah. You're like, I literally can't find anything I'm grateful for. And then once you start to find the little things that you are grateful for, they just flow. Like yeah. everything just comes to you and you're like, oh, well, I'm grateful for this, for yeah. that. for th-. And then people start to think of the most basic, mm-hmm. um, you know, human things that we have and they start to be grateful for them. And it's just, right. it, you know, it's, it's a great exercise. It j- totally changes your mindset. I always think of people coming from, a, f- from different backgrounds or different countries into America and how they view. It's like we have hot water and cold water whenever we want, right? Like, yeah. That most of the world does not have that. Right. You have food in your refrigerator. The majority of the world does not have yeah, that. And yeah. so it's like, you know, when you think about it, it's like you have the resources and, uh, I mean, blessings beyond measure just to be here and to have what you have. And so um, it, it's, I mean, you if you wake up and you're like, hey, look, I'm thankful that I can take a hot shower. Or that I can even choose. Yeah, yeah, you can choose what to take. Yeah. <laughs> right, I can take a hot shower or a cold shower, but I get to make that choice, right? And I'm choosing what I get to eat every day when most of the world does not get to choose. It's just what's available. Yeah. So it's amazing when you think about it that way. Um, so again, think of just in your gratitude practice every single day, think of just one thing that you're grateful for, and this helps reshape your mind. You, you st- and, and the other thing that happens is you begin looking for things that you appreciate because you're as you're sort of cultivating this uh, uh, gratitude practice, you are reshaping your brain to start looking for things that you should be grateful for rather than looking at what's going wrong. Um, The other thing that I think is important to do is just evaluating wins. Like I have a weekly practice of, hey, what are my three to five wins for this week, which is in my full focus planner. I don't know if you have something like that where you're just going like, hey, what worked this week? Oh, absolutely. Like what went well? Yeah, just reflection. Absolutely. And, and it's not always, you know, business oriented. Sometimes it's personal, yeah. but, but whatever it is, just write it down. Oh, I would say specifically that it doesn't need to be business oriented. No. If you're winning with your family, you are winning. That's one of the things here at the Agent Bridge is like, this isn't about like your life feeding your work. You're, you're not um, living to work. You're working to live. And so... Um, if you were able to take a couple of days off and spend with your kids and cultivate relationship, that's what's most important. Uh, and I will say, um, a lot of times the things that lead to winning in your personal life are the same things that lead to winning in business. I would say most of the time. So, yeah. you know, just <laughs> yeah. keep that in mind yeah. too. Okay. The second one that I use a lot is your breath work, right? So the things that are, uh, are, are the, the, things that cause like anxiety, stress, like if you can recognize that your body is a bit of a machine. So a lot of us become subject to our emotions. Like if we have an emotion, then that co- that is communicating something that's true. And I don't think that that's the case. It's like just because you feel something doesn't mean it's real. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this uh, works a lot if you have kids. Like a lot mm-hmm. of times they feel like a certain reality 
in a certain situation um, that's just their mind playing tricks. I heard a thing the other day. I don't remember what it was, and I'm going to butcher it, but it was talking about, it's like, imagine you're three years old and it's a snowy day outside and your mom made cinnamon rolls and hot chocolate, but you're in a blind rage because you're three, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like emotions aren't like if you you can see in your kids if you have kids like emotions aren't indicative of reality it's like um so don't be a slave to the emotions and so if you can kind of recognize your body as a machine and you've got basically chemicals that exist in your body and that you can manipulate or control these chemicals by things like breathing and exercise we're going to talk about that in a minute but but Again, like anxiety and stress, they are raising cortisol levels. Um, and so what you can do is use breath work to sort of get yourself back to a uh, sort of a stat static state or in even like a positive state just by doing breathing. And this is basically, this is practice in the military. Navy SEALs use this, everybody. Um, you can get yourself in a better mindset by doing a little bit of breath work. And it doesn't take long, two to five minutes. If that of breathing. So the one that I use is like a standard, like just in through the nose, out through the mouth, like in six seconds, out six seconds. Right. So that's a good one. The one that I learned, learned from the Navy SEAL practice is box breathing. So that's in six, hold six, out six, hold six. I'm talking about seconds so in six seconds, hold six seconds, out six seconds, hold six seconds. So that again, creates a static or even positive mindset. And then the third is the double tap where you're breathing in to where you feel like your lungs are full. And then you take like another hit, like, like after that. And I, that one to me is my favorite. Like that one gets me in a positive mindset fast. Yeah. Did I you used, guys use this stuff in? Oh yeah. Professional athletes all over the place use this kind of stuff. Um, the six, 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 six is a, a big one. Um, that's the one I use the most, but you, you know, you like the double tap, but it, no matter what it is, the idea is just to get yourself focused on breathing. Yeah. And when you're focused on breathing, you're not focused on whatever else you think is going to cause you, you know, infinite amounts of pain. Right. And so focusing on that, regulating your body, that's the idea. Yeah. So it, it almost doesn't matter what exercise you pick. It's just focus on steady breathing and just don't think about the things that are causing whatever it is. You're Isn't going. that though kind of like one of the, like whether it's box breathing or whatever, like from an athletic perspective, isn't that just like whether you're cycling, whatever, like breathing is like everything. Yeah. It's the only thing. Weightlifting, basketball, like whatever, running, like it's that focus on the breath because you can regulate, you can regulate your body through that breathing. Yeah. So again, like a seeing your body as a machine and then going, okay, well, like, you know, if I have this negative emotional state or something that's come to me that's negative, I can reframe it. I can do a little bit of breath work to see what I really think about it and give myself some time to think about it. Um, but to get myself out of that panic. Yeah. I mean, say I was a 400 meter runner in track. Okay. Yeah. And it's the worst 47, 48 seconds of your life. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you can focus yeah. on relaxing your muscles so that your, you know, your face is relaxed while you're running mm -hmm. and that you can focus on breathing, you aren't thinking about the infinite amounts of pain that you're in while you're, you know, right. running that race because it's basically an all out sprint for a full, full lap. So mm -hmm. just the same concept. Like you're just, thinking of something to get your mind off the fact that this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it, I think it's interesting though, that by focusing on breathing, you can take your mind off of the pain. Absolutely. That's exactly what it's for. Right. I, I, anyway, I think that's fascinating. Okay. So um, again, you know, and you can look into these in YouTube or whatever, but like th these are, I mean, you might think it's crazy. You might think it's like, okay, or what are these guys talking about? But I'm telling you, this is what Navy SEALs use. This is what athletes use. This is what people in peak performance use. So if you are going to be a person of peak performance, you need to learn how to master the art of breath work. So um, do it. And by the way, it is not something you're going to have. Like it's a practice, right? You've got to practice it and develop it over time. And so once you realize um, the positive effects from breath work, you will start to incorporate it into your daily life. Yeah, I mean, and you can use it in all sorts of, facets. So like whether or not you've entered into a stressful situation and you feel yourself about to respond in a negative mm -hmm. manner, 
a little breath work, then figure out how you're going to respond. Guarantee you it's going to be different than 30 seconds ago. Yeah, so, absolutely. So there's all different ways to use th this type of um, exercise, but yeah, definitely important. Okay, before we say this next point, we did a podcast where we talked about this and we had a huge amount of people that dropped off. Yeah, okay? it wasn't popular. It was not popular. So this is the most unpopular thing that we talk about. But We're but still going to talk, We're still gonna talk yeah. about it. And what I want to uh, challenge you to do is stick stick with it. Stick with the podcast through this part, okay? So we're going to talk about exercise. I know. Hang in there, okay? You're not my trainer. <laughs> exactly. But I'm not saying you got to do CrossFit. I'm not saying you have to be a bodybuilder. I'm not saying you have to be a professional athlete. But what I can tell you, right, is, and I've got this, like, little quote here. Um, where did I put it? Shoot. Where did it go? Anyway. But basically, like if you could bottle the positive effects from exercise into a pill, it would be the most sought after um, drug ever in history. That's right. Right. Because there are so many good things that happen from in terms of like how you feel, right? From your positive, the positive things that happen in your physical body. And you don't even have to be, um, like I said, you don't have to be a professional athlete or crossfitter or bodybuilder to have the positive effects for this. You just have to get started doing something and moving in the right direction. Yeah, just go for a 30-minute walk. Exactly. Your body has all the stored energy. Something's got to happen with it. But when you do these things, right, it's going to increase endorphins. It's going to regulate the cortisol hormone. And it's like it chemically, this is not like a... a subjective opinion. This is factual. It will make you happier and decrease your stress. It makes you chemically more able to experience joy and positive feelings. Yeah. I, I think these days people associate exercise with the CrossFit or with something extreme mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be that. It can be mm -hmm. what walking is proven to be a fantastic form of exercise. You can get out there, do a 30 minute walk, yeah. One time a day, twice a day, whatever you think you need, but right. fantastic form of exercise. And it's not something that you're going to um, kill your body doing. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, that blood flowing in your body is just going to help you feel better. And I've had a couple of um, mornings recently, so I'll, I'll walk for about 20 minutes and then run for about 20 minutes. And I've had a couple of mornings where it's like you just don't want to get out of bed and you don't want to do it. And it's like it's cloudy, it's rainy, whatever, um, or you're tired. And, you know, I've kind of like forced myself out of it. And then with about 10 minutes, I'm like, I'm so glad that I did this. So if you can just make it through 10 minutes of discomfort, your whole day will be improved. Yeah. And then you've accomplished something. Yep. Um, but the other thing is like um, that exercise of doing something you don't want to do is going to be incredibly important because it's it incorporates something called activation energy and that activate activation energy is the thing that you use to to have positive change in your life right like uh that getting your butt off the couch getting your butt out of bed like that activation energy is the same energy it takes you to do something uncomfortable in your business yeah and so it's like it's practice it's basically it's it's um you are getting a rhythm or momentum in your day by doing the thing that you don't want to do, which by the way, our work is like doing things we don't want to do. Yeah. The first three weeks is the hardest. Yeah. It's getting in that routine of I'm going to get up or at night or whatever it is, whenever I'm going to exercise to, to get my walk done or my run mm -hmm. done or my, this or that done. Same thing with, you know, lead generation. We want you to do it from nine to 11, some, somewhere in that time frame, eight to 11, something like that it's difficult to get in a habit of doing that every day so that you make sure your pipeline's full because people, you know, start to think, Hey, I've got two deals going now. I don't need to do lead gen for the next week or two. Yeah. And that's the minute your business starts to fall off. Just same with exercise. You quit doing it for that week. You're like, ah, oh, I feel pretty good. I've been exercising for a month now. Mm -hmm. Take that week off. Guess what? It's going to be very difficult to come back from that. So it's, it's getting in a routine. It's getting in a habit. It's doing the thing you don't want to do so that you continue to have success. Can I say one thing about, you know, that sort of practice of activation energy and getting that state and doing lead generation and building a pipeline? Here's the best thing about building a strong pipeline by daily consistency, which, by the way, 
If you were to ask a room full of a hundred people, what do they need more? Consistency or training? What do you think they're going to say? Consistency. Consistency. That's it. Yeah. Right. Like the whole thing is not in your, cause I mean, real estate agents are notorious for that. We need more training. We need more training. We need more training. No, like you are going to get the training that you need from being out in the field. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that real estate agents shouldn't be trained, but you're focusing way more like something magical is going to drop out of the sky. And the reality of it is the training you need is going to come from interaction with clients. Like uh, you're going to get so much better training from even screwing it up and not knowing what you're doing than from, uh, you know, sitting in a classroom for yeah. hours and hours. You know, it's funny in the corporate world one time, uh, we surveyed uh, a couple of different departments about what they felt like they weren't getting um, mm -hmm. from the executive leadership team. And I think I want to say it was like almost 80% of the people said training. Mm -hmm. Same same as what you're saying oh, about yeah. realtors. 80% of the people, some odd, 80, 85, something like that said training. So we implemented a plan to provide ample amounts of training. We spent a lot of money. We, I think, I want to say we quadrupled our training budget we poured mm -hmm. training out there, and then we re-polled everyone a year later. And no one said training anymore. They said, oh, I started the training, but I never finished it. <laughs> or I did this and didn't do yeah. that. Or And because we noticed, obviously, that nobody was utilizing the training that they said that they so desperately needed. And it was because they said, oh, well, I, I did one class, or I did this, or I did that, and I just didn't continue. That's that just speaks to the consistency. I'm so it was so funny because like I was listening to a podcast yesterday where uh, it's called uh, the school of greatness with Lewis house, which is great, but he was interviewing four different Navy seals. One of them was David Goggins, which if you haven't heard of him, go look him up. He's awesome. Um, he's a funny guy because he's like, he's, he's considered to be like the toughest man on the planet, been in every like special operation school in the military. But he was talking about like his job for a while in the Navy seals because they kept having a bunch of guys like flunk out. So they would give them like a two month lead up where it was his job to get these guys in shape before they went to buds, which is basic training for Navy SEALs. And he said the numbers once the, he's like, and he's like, these guys were, I had them in shape. They were physical studs. And he said, and we got them in there and the failure rate didn't change. And he said, so all we had was really in shape quitters. <laughs> like, so it's the same thing that you're talking about. It's like, we, we can give you training all day long, right? As a matter of fact, everything that you need to know is in the last 34 episodes of real, of the, the agent bridge podcast, yeah. everything that you want to know about how to succeed in real estate minus maybe a couple of like nuances or details. Okay. But like the major concepts of success in real estate we've covered. Yeah, for sure. So it's not in the, it's not in the training. It is in the consistency. It's the people who will pick up and do the work every single day, regardless of how they feel. And so what we've taught you earlier is like, you can control how you feel through the exercise, which hopefully you guys didn't drop off through the breath work and through cultivating that, like that gratitude. So, you know, again, uh, a take advantage of that activation energy, build that skill of consistency. And by the way, if, if you're the person who's like, I'm just not a consistent person or I don't have, I'm not a disciplined person. Let me just challenge you. That is a limiting belief. Uh, that is, it's a skill you haven't developed, but that doesn't mean you are not that person. That's right. Right. So stop the BS, right? Like stop saying like, I'm not as disciplined as so-and-so you can develop work ethic. You can develop consistency. You can develop um, discipline through correct, through consistency, through correct action built over time, which builds confidence, right? If you challenge, like, just go after the things that you're scared of yeah. and challenge the BS that you're telling yourself. Definitely a learned behavior. You can, you can become more mm -hmm. consistent. Um, the, I, I, lo I love this quote. And again, this is a paraphrasing and I'm going to like butcher it, but I believe the quote is, the only difference between where you are and where you want to be is the BS excuses you keep telling yourself. Yeah. So stop giving yourself excuses, right? Which brings us into our next point, which is take action. Okay. Be a man or a woman of action. So much of our stress, so much of your stress, our stress and anxiety comes from just not taking action from procrastination. It's like, it's the thing that I need to do. 
and I'm scared to do it and I haven't taken action on it. And then it builds and it builds and it builds until the whole thing, like it just crumbles on you and you're just buried under this mountain of unfinished work. You've lost your confidence. And so it's like, be a man or woman of action. Stare down the thing that you're most scared of. Like today, the thing that you're like, you've been putting off, putting off, putting off, whether it's lead generation, whether it's the IRS, whether it's uh, 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 the, the the bill that you're afraid to open, whether it's um, uh, whatever it is, right? Take action, right? Go ahead and jump into it so that way you can start to solve the problem, okay? Just any step, just any step towards right something that needs to be done, whatever just, that is. It just won. Like yeah. even like... So many people like they they don't even know what the problem is because they haven't even taken the uh, the time or the the steps to even just figure out yep. what the problem is because yep. they're too scared to address it. So um, just take the next right step and keep moving it forward. And what I can tell you is like th- this is one of the things that like I mean even you've like challenged me a lot on this like because I think that you know I can be a thinker or a processor, but like just hanging around you, you take action on things so fast that it's changed the way that I like address, uh, approach the world where you almost never wait. You're like, you, no. you're like you, you, it's like, you know, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a thoughtful person, but sometimes that, that quote unquote thoughtfulness can, can, you know, brush up against procrastination and you are not a procrastinator at all. You just like, go for it. No, I don't. I don't like to procrastinate. Um, I I analyze, but I quickly try to make a decision and move right. forward. And sometimes that means you have to adjust. Yeah. Like you know, you might move in a direction. You're like, I could have done that a little differently, and we've mm-hmm. done that. Like we've sure. made a few decisions together. Of course, we're like, hey, this is the right thing to do right now. And then we've gotten into it and been like, well, maybe not. But yeah. we're going to start veering off a little bit and heading down this path. And right. that's okay. Yeah, just, just like what we're talking about, it's worse to sit there and do nothing mm-hmm. than to head towards a direction and make an adjustment. Right. So, just doing something, I think, is ultra critical. Yeah. Um. And, and I had a friend mentor who said he's like, "There's no he's like, there's no such things as wrong decisions or right decisions. There's only indecision. It's like you are never." going to have all the information you need. And even if you feel like you made the most perfect decision, chances are that something's going to go wrong, right? There's a variable you haven't thought of. And so sometimes you just have to make a decision and manage the results. Yeah. And that's right. And I've worked for a lot of companies that were very, very large organizations, but they operated on, you know, quote unquote, skeleton crews. Like they had small corporate offices, but, you know, huge budgets, huge payrolls, um, you know, huge revenue. And that forces that. That forces that action. You you have to take action quickly. You might have to manage the results. You might have to make changes, but you've got to do something. You've got to move forward. And yeah. that has just been instilled in me from the entire time I was working with those types of organizations. So nothing is going to happen by doing nothing. And things aren't magically going to get better. So the sooner you take action, the sooner you're going to solve the problem. And I was going to bring up like a quote here from a guy that, that, uh, today his name is, um, Aaron Dressel. Can I want to hear talk so I can find it real quick? Cause it was a really good quote. And I don't want to, I don't want to remove it from the, uh, from the podcast. Honestly, just to boil this down to the simplest of terms, just do something, just move forward. Just, just make that first step because it's going to be more difficult to make that first step than it is to be, to complete whatever task it is we're talking about. It's, it's uh, the um, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the indecision, the fear of the fact that you're approaching a deadline that you haven't done anything towards is is what's keeping you from taking that that action. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just being a person of action uh, will lead to a lot of positive changes in your life. So he's he says this is another one where agency he goes. He said uh, Basically, the the idea is like 10 ways to stay poor working in real estate. Number two was be totally prepared before taking next steps forward. He said, getting ready to get ready to be ready to get ready, but never moving forward. It's common for people to get overly obsessed with perfection or complete competence before ever being willing to take a step into the unknown. It's like a person who always is stretching out 
warming up or watching game film, but never steps into the arena to participate because they just don't feel ready and don't want to mess up. It's just like agents. Agents will say like, oh, I went through real estate school and I don't know how to write a contract. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to make the calls. And all that's true. Like real estate school teaches you none of that. Uh, But being able to jump in, take action, do the best you can with the information you have available and learn along the way is far more important than just saying, someone train me about everything there is to know about real estate and then I'll take action because that will never work. First of all, you're never going to learn everything because every situation is completely different. But second, like you're going to learn a lot just doing things and failing. Yep. All right. Number five, be honest with yourself and ask for help. Okay. So I like this thing called, uh, it's the Stockdale paradox. Okay. So Admiral James Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for over seven years, he, he said, you must never, so let me start this over. He said, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end which you can never afford to lose with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. And so the idea behind that is like a, a lot of people are, you know, delusional. They, they don't face the most, they don't confront the most uh, or the reality of their situation, which causes things to get worse. And so it's like, go ahead and face what it is. Like, even if you have to write it down, like where you are, in your business, where you are in your career, where you are in, you know, in, in your process of becoming a great agent, face the reality. What are you doing wrong? Because the the more you can face that reality, the more that you have the agency or the ability to fix the problem. So be honest. Okay. But that don't confuse that honesty with, uh, or that brutal reality, um, with discouragement. So it's like, you can be real, but don't let that, uh, put you in a place of, of being discouraged because you can use that reality where it's like, okay, well now I know where I am. What, what are the steps that I can take to get better? So you have to have faith that you're going to prevail in the end. Okay. Um, and the other part is like just asking for help because you have, and this is something that we don't like to do. Um, we don't like to ask for help from people and we would rather give up or say, it's not for me, or create some sort of excuse than to ask for help from people around us who want us to succeed. Okay, so if you don't have someone in your life that you can ask for help in your real estate career, let us be the people that you ask for help. Reach out. Yep. We're here. Like, I mean, we are an email away. We're a text message away. I mean, you can Google us and you can find everything that you need to know. Well, and our email address is in the show notes of every episode. Right. So email us on that um, for sure. But yeah, right. you can find our phone numbers. It's not hard. Right. So if it's so it could be your broker, it could be a real estate coach, you could be have another friend in the business. If it's none of those things, uh uh, or if you feel like you need help and you're not getting it, reach out to us. Like we we, we want to help you. And one of the things that you'll find in this world is that there are people who want to help you succeed. Um, and, and the more you surround yourself with those people, the better you're going to be. And you can, it it is not, you know, you don't have to fall into like this place of despair or, or quitting. Like you listen, you can't fail if you don't quit, but in reality, sometimes you need help, right? You, sometimes you need a guide. Sometimes you need a mentor. And I would tell you like in my life, and you could probably say the same thing. Like I am the result of people who cared about me. Absolutely. No, no question. Right. That, that gave of themselves to me to help me succeed. No question. So, you know, it's like if you, you, first of all, you want to surround yourself with those people, but know those people are out there and if they are not, we're them. So. Yeah. We actually had a person leave the brokerage about a year ago. You may remember this, you may not. And one of the things they said, we did an exit interview. One of the things they said was, um, I didn't feel like, you know, the broker was always available. We tell everyone on every single meeting, every single email we send, every single communication, we're here for you. Here's our phone numbers. Reach out to yeah. us. And so this person, I, I, you can only assume just was scared to reach out because mm-hmm. there's ample opportunities to reach us. There's sure. a meeting every day that we're on. Yeah. There's Our email addresses are there. Our phone numbers are there. Mm-hmm. Um, that should never be the problem because that's the whole purpose. Right. Of, of what we're doing here is that we're here to yeah, help. Right. And reach us however you want. Right. Come to a 
Come to a mastermind. Come to a meeting. Send right. us a text. Send us an email. Yeah. FaceTime me. I don't care. Yeah. But yeah we don't know you need help in, in, unless you let us know. That's right. So just ask, yeah. right? And so um, so I, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. If you, if you don't have somebody, let us be that. Let us be the person that helps you. And um, feel free to reach out. No judgment. Everybody in real estate was where you are when you're asking for help at There's some no point. Question. Yeah. At some point. Um, everybody didn't know how to write a contract. Everyone didn't know how to navigate a certain situation. Everybody didn't know, didn't know the best way to call uh, for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. Like all of that. We've yeah. known all of that. Well, and another thing that I'll say is that it makes us happy. Like we're fulfilling our life's calling to help you. Like that's what I want to do. We wouldn't right? be doing this. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we... Right. Like why would we be giving you free content on YouTube and like, yep. I'm, uh, you know, you know, spending hours each week and editing and creating this stuff. If we weren't in this, I'd like genuinely help people succeed. And so we want that for you. Reach out to us if we can help you. Um, don't, yeah. Just because you haven't met us in person doesn't, doesn't uh, mean that you can't shoot a text or an email. Absolutely. Um, anything you want to recap from this episode? I feel like we, uh, uh, I thought that was pretty good. Um, I really love digging into that stuff. Kind of helped me on a few things too, just to kind of remind myself of some of this mindset stuff that maybe I need to be practicing more regularly. But yeah, no, I think everybody can um, can hear what we had to say, even ourselves. We we're yeah. basically talking to ourselves in this episode as well. Sure. Yep. Um, everybody can get down in the dumps. Everybody can uh, be frozen by not taking action. All of these things happen to every human being. Mm -hmm. So we're we're not saying anything to you that we wouldn't say to ourselves. So. Well, let me leave you with this. Like you absolutely have what it takes to make it, right? And it's just a matter of l l more important than skills is consistency. And you can develop that consistency with right action over time, developing a plan, having some accountability, right? So let us know what um, what we can do to help. And um, yeah, uh, other than that, we'll plan on seeing you at the next episode. Thank you guys for joining this week. Don't forget to like the episode, to subscribe. Um, we're just like, we're almost at 200 subscribers. 199, 199 unless we hit 200 yeah. during, during recording. Right, which we may. Um, but uh, thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Thanks.